A combination of news. First up, some poor news, and it's quite sad. Yannick Sinner has been told by doctors to rest to avoid his hip injury from becoming chronic. It's very likely that he will skip Roland Garros, and that decision will be made later this week. That does not totally mean that he will not be playing. However, he has even gone to Juventus Football Club looking to see what can go on, how it can be treated, how the issue can be resolved. And it's not looking great for Janik Sinner. A long, long career ahead of him. So there's no rush. There is a battle to be number one. And he might even get it if he doesn't play, which we'll get to in a moment. But perhaps it is the correct choice. No need to rush back into the tennis. He's had a great 2024. And hopefully he can be back up and running very, very soon. But we have to watch out to see that final statement from Yannick Sinner regarding Roland Garros and his participation or their lack of. Here, Jose Mogado, he is talking about that. The reports in Italy say that Yannick Sinner is very likely to miss Roland Garros. He will still end the tournament as the new number one if Novak Djokovic doesn't reach another final. The video the other day that we made was in regards to how Djokovic is likely going to lose number one following his loss to Tabilo. But who knows now? Maybe I'm going to eat my words up, aren't I? Perhaps if Novak Djokovic can win or make the final of Roland Garros and Yannick Sinner doesn't play, that world number one might be in the hands of Novak Djokovic for just some time longer. Who knows? The tides can turn very, very quickly in the tennis world. A week is a very long time. And at the end of the day, it's about staying fit. But as I said, Yannick Sinner is very young. He's got a lot of time ahead of him. Perhaps if it was someone else at a later stage of their career in career best form, they would play Roland Garros in Yannick Sinner's case. On his worst surface, that doesn't mean he can't win. He's perhaps not the smartest choice to risk further injury at the very young age. So we'll see. Either way, I would support his choice and we'll see what happens. The other news today is Robert Lewandowski, France Football, are considering awarding the 2020 Ballon d'Or to Robert Lewandowski. That is coming from via at sport, a very reputable source. And what do you think? Is it okay to give awards from the past or change history? It happened, what, over four years ago? Or maybe not over four years ago, almost four years ago. It was quite a big scene at the time that he wasn't given a Ballon d'Or. It was cancelled, of course. He proceeded to be arguably robbed in 2021 when Lionel Messi won his seventh Ballon d'Or. He has since won another one, which also was quite questionable. I'm not being a Messi hater, but I'm just stating the truth, my opinion. And he does deserve it. He was the best player that year. Bayern Munich won the Champions League. It was an all-time season for Bayern Munich, but it was without fans and a very different season, but he deserves it. France football at the time didn't think it was appropriate to hand a Ballon d'Or. Perhaps some time has passed now and perhaps it is appropriate. He deserves it. And for history's sake, why not? But it does open up a bit of a dangerous precedent in regards to changing the history of sports. Is it okay? I guess in moderation, as is most things in life. Some other news in the Italian Open yesterday. The Italian Open had to suspend two matches yesterday, of course yesterday, as protesters threw confetti on the court, sat by the net and glued themselves to the stands. That is something that's happening in a lot of sports. We saw it actually last year at the French Open, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But it's something we've been exposed to quite a lot. The US Open as well, I'm pretty sure it happened. Haven't seen it too much as of late. It's happening in a lot of sports. Something you can't avoid. People are getting very opinionated these days and want to make their voice be heard in a big sporting event. In this case, the Italian Open. Let me know in the comments down below what is your opinion on this situation. And Alejandro Tabilo proves that his win over the world number one, Novak Djokovic, was no fluke. He reaches his first Masters quarterfinal but eating Kadan Hutchinov 7-6-7-6 in the fourth round of the Rome Masters. And it's his time. It's his show. Well done, Alex. Next up, he's got Zhang from China. And that's another winnable game for Tabilo. So perhaps he might be going all the way in Rome. We'll continue to follow his story. It's a great story. Powerful, humble, and inspirational. Inspired player. Well done to Alex. Everyone comment below. Well done, Alex, in the comments down below. And that's about it. A lot of news to cover. Some sad, some interesting, some that can cause a bit of debate in the comments down below. So let me know in the comments down below your opinions on each of the news stories. And as always, until next time.